Welcome to Crosspoint. Welcome to Crosspoint. Welcome to Crosspoint. We are an inclusive faith community seeking to live out the loving, just, and generous way of Jesus. We are participants in a long tradition that's less concerned with doctrines and dogma that demand total agreement, but a life to be lived, enjoyed, and given away to others. What unites us is a growing awareness that life is precious, that we are made by love in order to love. This community is comprised of and affirms the entire human family, regardless of race, age, creed, physical abilities, marital or economic status, gender identity, or sexual orientation. So, if you are curious and have come to see, if you are tired and have come to rest, if you are grateful and have come to share, if you are wounded and have come to heal, if you are joyful and have come to celebrate, if you are uprooted and have come to belong, welcome home. Welcome home. Welcome home. Welcome home.
A Blessing for Life After a Loss by Kate Bowler. Blessed are you who feel the wound of fresh loss, or of the loss, no matter how fresh, that still makes your voice crack after all these years later. You who are stuck in the impossibility, frozen in disbelief, how can this be? It wasn't supposed to be this way. Blessed are you fumbling around for answers or truths to make this go down easier, who demand answers or are dissatisfied with the shallow theology and trite platitudes. Blessed are we who instead demand a blessing because we have wrestled with God and are here, wounded, broken, changed. Blessed are we who keep parenting, who keep our marriages and friendships and jobs afloat, who stock the pantry, because what choice do we have but to move forward with a life we didn't choose, with a loss we thought we couldn't live without? One small step, one small act of hope at a time. rejoices. Fix us in thy humble home. Ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. And man at war with man hears not the love song which they bring. Now these are all lyrics of common Christmas carols. O holy night, hark the herald angels sing. O come, O come, Emmanuel, and a few others. And no, I don't share them with you to ruin your Christmas music experience, but rather to shine a light on a history of hope and heartache enduring together. We started having a Remember service eight years ago when we realized that the world seems to force upon us a cheery disposition and a need to celebrate, but some people, they have a lot to grieve, and it's made even more difficult around the holidays. We recognized that there was a need for space to remember what was lost, what we grieve, to name those things and to carry them not to shove them down and hide behind the false joy that we thought the world expected from us. In the last year, our community has endured so much. On top of a, di a pandemic, there have been diagnoses that have changed lives. It's changed the trajectory of families. There are marriages that are struggling and some they've ended. Jobs have been lost. Couples have struggled with infertility and month after month, they wait for their dreams to come true. Dreams are being shattered. Hope is waning. Friendships are splintered. And so many people have lost loved ones. Each of these reasons on their own are reasons why we may not feel like celebrating and why heartache may be our overriding emotion this time of year. Several weeks ago, I was in a place. <laughs> I was irritable. I was tired. I was lacking motivation in ways that I don't recall lacking in a very long time. Having a psychology background and years of therapy under my belt, I actually started wondering if something was wrong to the point that I reached out to my therapist and I said, something is wrong with me, what is happening? And as she often does, she turned it on me and said, well, Pam, what do you think's going on? Truly, I knew the answer to her question before she asked it. My heart was hurting and it had been for months. It was broken. It ached. You see, since our last Remember service, our family's gone through quite a bit. 
we lost my precious grandmother to COVID last year. And she wasn't just a grandma. I lived with her part of my childhood. And when we weren't living with her, we lived nearby. Then the sudden loss of my father in February, it was about all I could bear. My dad, when my husband passed away five years ago, my dad became a rock. He didn't live nearby, but every six weeks like clockwork, Papa David was in town and my kids were thrilled to spend time with him, as was I. There were memories made and projects completed. COVID meant we didn't see him for several months and then he's gone. And then COVID kept us from celebrating his life for several months. My heart ached. Then in an inventory of our lives and the chaos of being a mom with three kids, I realized we needed to make some adjustments in our home. And I set aside a dream I'd been working on for some time for the well-being of the rest of us. I didn't notice it at the time, but as the world started setting out Christmas decorations in October, I started to feel pressure. I felt pressured to be excited for Thanksgiving and pressure to be ready for Christmas and celebrating and lights and hope. But I wasn't. I couldn't bring myself to be excited about a holiday with two less family members to share it with. I couldn't fathom spending a week with my brother and not sharing it with my dad or not being able to call my grandma and tell her happy Thanksgiving and tell her stories about my kids. These carols I referenced, they tell stories of people hurting, aching, looking for hope. They show relief and hope in the birth of Jesus, hope born in his arrival. But Jesus' birth, it was also a struggle. The world was wrestling when he arrived. God's people were under Roman rule. History tells us that there's a dictator for a king and that while a few prospered, most people were farmers who struggled and peasants who toiled to make ends meet. Life was hard. And this savior, this hope, Jesus was born in a manger, the home for animals, more than a hundred miles from his home because of some unfair census that had to be conducted. His parents likely didn't have much money, and who knew what rumors were flying about his virgin mother and his carpenter father. Yet even in all that hardship, hope is born. The weary world rejoiced. Hope and heartache coexisting. Somehow the composers of these songs managed to describe carrying their hurt and at the same time carrying hope in their hearts. They describe how one can be wounded, an individual can be devastated and hopeful at the same time. Wounded and healing, not without hope. But how in the world do our broken hearts get there? Now, I'm not going to pretend to have all the answers. I'm human and I am imperfect, but I do have a few ideas. And as we gather to remember our aches and our hurts tonight, I want to give you some encouragement going forward as well. One, I want to encourage us to be honest with ourselves. Be honest with how you're feeling and be honest with your expectations of yourself. This may be an unpopular opinion, but if you don't want to celebrate, I give you permission to take a break this year. If you need to cry at the dining room table, you are welcome to do so. Your loss is real. If you need to have a temper tantrum, have it. You are grieving. 
We must be true to who we are and acknowledge what's going on inside of us if we are going to heal. Second, we got to be honest with God. And I'm just going to encourage you to just trust me on this one. Even as your care pastor who's supposed to guide people through hurt, I had words with God this past year. God, this isn't fair. God, this isn't right. How come them but not me? How are we supposed to do this, God? Not all of my words were the kindest, but we're still speaking. And honestly, I think he appreciates my vulnerability. When I'm honest with God, I'm better able to receive encouragement from Emmanuel, God with us. I'm better able to see the God in Psalm 121 who is a helper and a protector. I remember the God who frees his people in Exodus. I recall the God who comforts us in Psalm 23, the God who's near to the brokenhearted in Psalm 34. When I'm honest with myself and God, I'm able to see over and over again God's heart for his people and his heart for me. Last, I want to encourage you to find others to be honest with. And this I say with caution, and I honestly hesitated to share it because I know this is hard. I know not everybody out there is equipped to be this for you. But I do know there are people. There are professionals, there are lay people, and there are some incredible friends and community members out there who know how to walk with you, how to carry your hurt, how to allow you to ache, but point you towards hope. I encourage you to find those people, find the people who will let you be weary and walk with you. They won't push you, they won't drag you, they will let you be who you are, where you are right now. Now, if this is something you've been looking for and you can't find it, I encourage you to reach out to us. Cross Point, we have a mentor program. We have lists of counselors we refer to people to, and sometimes it takes a professional. We also have communities of people who are walking together, and we would love nothing more than to help you find people to walk with you on this journey. If I had any encouragement for you tonight, it would be to allow yourself to be you right where you are now and allow others to love you where you are right now. Remove the expectations, remove the shoulds, remove the must haves and the must do's. I invite you to let your cross point community come around you, support you, encourage you and stand with you no matter if today is one of those celebratory days or one of those days where you just can't muster the courage and strength to do so. You are not alone. We come from a long line of people who have endured hardship and somehow carried hope. And sometimes when we can't find the hope, we need to lean on the others to help carry it with us. At Cross Point, we remember the hard things of this year and last year and years previous. Let us remember with us. Let us remember together with you. Let us help carry your burdens. You're not alone. For the next few moments, I will be reading losses submitted to us by people in and around the Cross Point community. And I will read them as exactly how they have been submitted. As I do, you'll note some contrasts between the amount of detail shared or, or not shared, or the seeming intensity of one submission alongside of another. And I think this can be a good reminder for us that depending on the season, the others around us and in our lives, they wrestle with a variety of struggles and losses and then they process and experience those losses and struggles differently too. But the one constant is that others are always deserving of our compassion and our kindness. My dad, Larry Sterling, 
my mom, Nancy. My mom, Dorothy Dot Ballard. Losses related to COVID. Mama. My inner child, before being sexually abused by my dad and ridiculed by my family, I would like to remember who she was so that I can heal from the trauma and family dysfunction and learn how to give myself permission to love, honor, and take care of myself. Grief, loss from childhood and teenage years. Sierra Foster, Kevin Vroom, Carol, an empty nest transition, Robert Bowers, Richard Evans, a loving husband and father, my father, James B. Cochran, a truly good and faithful servant, my mom, Bonnie Marple, Marty Davis, the parts of myself that I sacrificed to stay in an unhealthy marriage to avoid hurting my kids and facing pain and difficulty involved in ending it. My marriage, my mom, Bonnie Dorch, childhood, my uncle Zeba and my uncle Ralph, my mom, Jean Buchanan, Tony Moberly, David, Patricia, and Jason, Tommy Roberts, Buddy Thompson, Bill Galloway, Ashley, Kate, Mums, Millard, Lee, Jan, Marcus, Elizabeth, Betsy, Ann Clement. My daughter has not spoken to me in five years and may never again by her choice. David Kuba, Aunt Edie. Job loss, home loss, missed family gatherings missed community events. Kelly Roach, Tim Carlos, Chris Taylor, Penny Pleasance, George Petkow Sr., Ryan Varghese, Narvis Wicker, loss of friendship, loss of trust. My mother, Kay Helsebeck. David Lewis, Nancy Lewis, Pep Girton. Repeated COVID-related disruptions. Mother, health, marriage, job. Loss of healthy bodies. Loss of healthy mind loss of faith. Doubtless, this is only the tip of the iceberg. We know there is so much more unspoken and even unimaginable complexity to what has been spoken. Let's take a moment and honor, honor the shared and unshared grief in our presence and may the healing spirit of Christ give us peace. Carry your burden If something's not right I will let you know Like the paint that's drying On a heart that's broke So let me carry your burden 
back on a high when you're feeling low When the weight's too heavy but you won't let go Come to me, my brother, and I will sit with you a while Pretty soon I'll see you smile and you know you will No matter how much you're hurting right now You know that everything will change in time So let me carry your burden Let me carry your burden Your heart's on fire, but your mind is cold And you're finding flames that won't keep you warm Come to me, my brother, and I will sit with you a while Pretty soon I'll see you smile and you know you will No matter how much you're hurting right now You know that everything will change in time Let me carry your burden, brother mine Let me carry your burden Come tomorrow, you'll be right as rain It'll quench your fire, wash away your stains Come to me, my brother, and I will sit with you a while Pretty soon I'll see you smile and you know you will No matter how much you're hurting right now You know that everything will change in time I just might see in another light I've got no dark here in the fight I can carry your burden, brother mine so very thankful you've chosen to spend this time with us and we don't take lightly the fact that it is a challenging evening and perhaps also a challenging time of year in general. The holidays can bring up all kinds of hard feelings and we know it takes some courage to come and allow yourself to be vulnerable in this space. If you're feeling extra raw right now or some emotions have been stirred for you this evening that feel overwhelming, you may want to continue on with processing those feelings. And we're here to support you in that, and I want to offer a few resources and next steps. The first is our Crosspoint Mentoring Program. Recently, someone who went through Crosspoint Mentoring said that the program was 10 out of 10, and they wrote that their mentor was, quote, very helpful and supportive, and I'm really glad I worked with him. He helped me a lot, especially in the initial stages of grieving the loss of my marriage and dealing with my anger about that. Members of our community who have been trained by Crosspoint Leadership are ready and available to walk with you as you continue to process your loss. Email mentors at crosspoint.org for more information. We also have a list of incredible counselors in the area who we refer to every week and receive amazing feedback as well. Feel free to use the mentors at crosspoint.org email address to access these resources too. Crosspoint offers all kinds of smaller groups to take part in, both in person and online. And it's been amazing to me how deep these relationships can actually get, even in the online format. So if you are interested in a smaller community within our larger Crosspoint community, go ahead and email community at crosspoint.org. 
Finally, feel free to join us in a post-service lobby this evening where we can spend some time together in real time, chatting, sharing memories, and hanging out together. I hope to see you there.